Welcome to the Songwriter Connection Podcast, where we look at the craft of songwriting through the eyes of the songwriter. Each week, we make a connection with a music maker, listen to their songs, and hear their stories. From Nashville, Tennessee, here's your host, Dave Lenahan. Well, it's good to be back with you, and I, I thank you again for spreading the news about uh, our little podcast. It's good to have you. I, I was asked just recently by one of our guests, Pepper J, what makes this show so special? And I don't know if it's any special, but you know, I tell you, for me, it grew out of my love for radio and interviewing. I've interviewed, if you've listened to past uh, episodes, I don't like to talk about myself, but I one of the things I loved to do when I was in radio was interview the artists. And I've entered, you, it, this, will date, this will date me, but I've interviewed everywhere from, uh, from, from Barbara Mandrell, Mm-hmm. <laughs> one of my first interviews when I worked in uh, I just, outside of Cleveland to Willie Nelson, so uh-huh. uh, and just about everybody in between, and and it was one of my favorite things. And um, so I thought podcasting seemed to me like starting your own radio station without having to worry about the ratings and the politics and the corporate stuff, you know, structure. So uh, a friend of mine who I worked with in radio had a podcast, asked me to guest on his. And I said, sure, but you got to tell me more about podcasting and show me how to get involved. So this all started January of uh, 2021. And what I wanted to do with this show was make it similar to what I used to do on radio. We had a little thing, a segment of my afternoon drive show in Cincinnati called the five o'clock freeway. And every now and then an artist would come up from Nashville. We pass him through and we put him on and we do live music and just talk. I thought it was the best job in the world. You know, I really did. And then when I left radio, when I got involved with NSAI, the Nashville Songwriters Association International, we had a very strong chapter in Cincinnati. We started our own TV show and that was called Nashville Songwriter Connection. And I thought, oh, I can do a podcast. I'd want to keep it like radio. So we're not video yet. Man, we might someday, but I want to be like radio, um, you know, and so, but I wanted it to be like the Nashville Connection TV show and uh, Songwriter Connection got its its start. Now, there's been a thing with Connection with Dave. My 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 uh, website is the Dave Connection. Uh, my radio show is the Nashville Connection. Two stations worldwide right now. Yoo-hoo, yeah, uh, terrestrial stations. But uh, yeah, so it's all just an extension, and uh, that's what we're all about. But hey, let me introduce you to some new friends of mine that I've been very lucky to to, to uh, meet and get to know in the last few days, and they're from Las Vegas. Pahrump, Nevada, about Nevada? an hour west of Vegas. But are you? Okay. What's an hour west of Vegas? Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump is the name P-A-H- of the town. P-A-H-R-U-M-P. It's a beautiful valley surrounded by mountains, and most of the year we can see snow on the top of them. <laughs> oh, what a musical name. Pahrump. <laughs> Pahrump, pum, pum, pum. It's, it's Pepper Jay is with us, and John Michael Ferrari. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. You've done a lot. I mean, a lot. I'm looking at your... Your resume is, is, your CV is like pages. Uh, I don't even know where to begin with you. I, I understand you've been doing music for a long time, John Michael. You've got a lot of CDs out there and available. Uh, you've got uh, your music on Spotify, everywhere you can find music. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, where did it start for you? Well, I started when I was very young. Uh-huh. I think I got my first guitar at seven, eight years old. Yeah. And I learned how to play Tom Dooley. <laughs> of course. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. And I'm still working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so is my Uncle Fran. Fran, if you're listening. <laughs> He'll get that soul family joke. He used to always pick up a guitar. And go, Hang down your head. Never mind. Go ahead. That's funny. I love it. But, um, and then I was sidetracked for a while. And uh, I took up roller skating mm. and ice skating. Me too. Wow. Did you really? Yes. I loved ice skating. I loved the ice skating. <laughs> but then when I found out that there were more cuter girls at the <laughs> roller rink, I switched. <laughs> <laughs> and when you found out uh, a lot more cuter girls like guys with guitars, right? Yes, I bet you, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you over. I was living in San Francisco at the time. Were you? And um, I got my first guitar and I didn't know which way to hold it. Because mm-hmm. I'm general, I'm left-handed. Oh, are you? Okay. And uh, But I thought... Well, however Elvis is holding the guitar, that's of how course. I'm going to hold it. And that's what I do today. Okay. Same way. So you're going to play right-handed. Yeah. Yeah. Right-handed. Wow. A lot of people have done that. That's but cool. uh, I knew uh, at an early age what I wanted to do. And mm-hmm. uh, that's what I've been fortunate to do most of my life. All of my life. I've been uh, 
Uh, I used to tour a lot uh, with uh, doing cover songs and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole th that thing. Yeah. But that was a good uh, starting ground to learning how to write songs. Because, you know, when you learn how to play all these different cover songs, you're learning. You really are. Yeah. You're learning format, structure, where the chorus begins. Or sometimes back then, uh, they didn't have a chorus. They just had a bridge many times. Or a refrain. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so when I started writing my own songs, I just knew. Yeah. I knew how to uh, structure the songs. And, and today, you know, I, I tell people, I said, but you have to know your goal. Are you going to yeah. be a songwriter? Are you going to be a singer, entertainer? What is that specific goal? Mm -hmm. And when I figured that out, that I was going to switch to songwriting, um, it was an easier path, I think. Yeah. Because it, it's a difficult path to, in this business. But if you know your goal... And you and you do what's within that structure. You're going to get the results you want. I hear you. If you're not working in that structure of songwriting, writing commercial songs like I do, we do, um, then you're not going to get where you want to go, and that's commercial play. A lot of songwriters don't want to write commercial. They want to write the way they want to write. And you know that's okay. Yeah. It depends on what you want to do. How you define success, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, uh, we've had many songs on the charts mm -hmm. because of you that. have, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yes. all over the world. Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. it's so exciting to yeah. know that your song is being played on another continent. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> yes. Yeah, but that because we write in that structure, mm -hmm. we know that the, the chorus is going to come at forty seconds or right around there. If there's a pre-chorus, there's a post-chorus. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to know the structure. Yeah, if that's what your goal is to write for a commercial. Radio and I like writing for commercial radio. That's it's great. an art. It is an art form. You know, it's a craft. Yeah, <laughs> you learn it, you perfect it, just like any other craft, and keep working on it, right? And you keep it simple and repetitive. Keep it simple. <laughs> the Kiss Method, right? Yes. Yeah. And sometimes a story just comes out of him, and it does not follow a radio structure, and that's okay. Yeah, that's I okay. think it is. We added on albums as an extra gift to our fans, his fans. That, you were uh, telling me about one that was, what, uh, six minutes and some seconds, which radio people would go, oh, no. You know. Six minutes and 32 seconds. Wow. The song is a story song called Peggy Sue's. Ah, it's, that's on this record you gave me. Oh, Be the Smile on Your Face. Be the album. Smile on Your Face. It, I'm it, holding it up like there's a camera in here. Yeah. Here it is. Right? It has our goat, Ozzy, on the cover. That's your goat? Yes, it is. It's like Goat in the Kitchen? Like, Super in the Kitchen? Yes, John Bowser's <laughs> Our song. friend John Bowser has a song called Goat in the Kitchen. I'm sorry, I digress. No, it's a great <laughs> song. A great song. <laughs> and I delivered uh, numerous CD packages mm -hmm. all over Europe and in Australia. That album, Be the Smile on Your Face, in 2020. Okay. And Peggy Seuss was on that album. But one DJ that I did not know personally, now I know them very well through mm -hmm. email and text and all the things you do, you know. Yeah. Uh, played Peggy Seuss and really liked the story. Wow. He explained to me that his radio format there in... I think it was in Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, okay. it was three songs in a commercial Sounds until right. you were on the hour and half hour, and then you had more commercials and more this, that, and the other. Right. And they used Peggy Sue's for two slots. So, Did he, they? so okay. he would play two songs instead of three songs. He played Peggy Sue's and one song, and then go to a commercial. And then someone in Brisbane heard it and liked it and he started playing it and then Cannes, Australia mm. and then Sydney and then it went over to Christchurch, New Zealand so it was amazing because oh for about six weeks he was on Australian uh, charts for that song uh, Peggy Sue's Six Minutes and 30 oh, I'm trying to find it to play it I'm, Six I'm, Minutes I'm and 32 Seconds <laughs> Six minutes and 32 yeah, seconds. Yeah, so that was pretty surprising for us because it wasn't its intent. But you know what they say, man plans, God <laughs>, laughs. That's so true. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it up. I should have had this ready uh, because I was... It's Ferrari, like the car, right? While you're pulling it up, you know... There it is. Go right ahead, here. play it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say that this was recorded at Larry Beard, B-E-A-I-R-D. Beard Studios are some of the best. In Nashville. Yes. 
in uh, Berry Hill area of Nashville. We've recorded three albums there. And our session leader, uh, we were uh, tracking, uh, he said, okay, everybody, let's go to verse 11. And he looked up <laughs> and says, 11. he says, I don't think I've ever said that in my whole musical career. <laughs> and all of the amazing studio <laughs> artists just start laughing. But it's like you say, you got to know the rules to break them, right? Yes. So let's just a little bit of this. This is Peggy Sue's. Okay? Yeah. We won't play all 11 verses, but can we get a little taste of it? Is that okay? Let's Pulled do that. into Peggy Sue's at the edge of town. Drinking my coffee, waitress said, be anything else. I said, no thanks. I'm just passing through. Maybe a sandwich to go. Some hot coffee too. Well, you know what I love about it already? It's so conversational. Yeah. She returned moments later with my sandwich in a bag. I didn't say anything, glancing at the name on her tag. She said, You look familiar when you walk through the door. You're mistaken, lady. I've not been here before. Interesting. You may not remember me. It was a long time ago. We were together for a while. There were things you didn't know. Like the lonely nights I dreamed without you. And that night you left, I cried for two. Ooh. Now, Pepper J., you wrote your co writers on this, right? So, on this particular song, John uh-huh. Michael Ferrari really wrote the whole song. Yeah. Um, I had made some additions, some mm-hmm. suggestions. But interestingly enough, we don't usually disagree mm. on basic tenets of a song, but on this one, we did. Did you? There's the end of the song where. But don't tell him how it he, ends. We want you to listen. Go to the go to your, wherever you get music. Yeah. John Michael Ferrari huh? and get the Peggy Sue's. But yeah, you can tell us kind of generally, can't you? Apparently not. <laughs> well, well, you don't want to give it away. You, know, you don't want to give the story you, away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just put it this way. He ended it the way he wanted to, and it turned out wonderful. Okay. Um, I end what I, the way I would have ended it would have mm. been. Uh, a verse before the current end now, mm-hmm. and it would have ended hanging and maybe not such a pleasant story. Ah, <laughs> I, something I, poignant. I, huh? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the whole song is based on its wonderful life. Yeah. What would it have been like? That's my all-time favorite movie. What way. if? What if? He would have stayed. Ooh. Mm. And now he finds out he has a child. Oh. So it's a wonderful life is the story of someone that's very unhappy because he's having financial problems and says, oh, my wife and family would be better without me. And the right. angel then shows him. Gives him his wish. Well, yeah, gets yeah. his wish. And he was miserable. And he goes, gosh, I, I just want my family back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a story. It came about because we were driving back from uh, uh, Las Ve- uh, from L.A. to Las Vegas. And there's mm-hmm. a, a restaurant there called Peggy Sue's. Peggy Sue's, yeah. Right past Barstow. I'm sure a lot of people might know that. Mm-hmm. And as I uh, walked Inspired in there, I thought, this could make a good place for a song. Oh. And that's how that song came about. And it encapsulated my life into six minutes mm-hmm. about uh, what the song was about. I've had people was call me and touch say... Was there a truth had, in that song? Yeah, there's some, there's truth. some truth in it. Mm-hmm. And I had people call me and said I had to pull over to the side of the road and start crying. started crying. I love songs like that. Even when he performs it live. Mm-hmm. Several people are crying in several parts oh. of that song. I can't even sing the song live. No, because oh he, I, he start... broke down crying once. He had a full house. <laughs> oh my goodness! No, so I, I can't sing it live. Very difficult for me to sing that live. Oh, bad. Yeah. But emotion is so so much a part of singing and songwriting. And songwriting right? Yeah, it really yeah. is. So, Perump, is that like 
uh, like halfway between Vegas and in L.A. So, I, you know, I've never been out there, and I'd, I'd love to someday experience that. Um, is it very far either way, in either direction? From Los Angeles, mm-hmm. you would take the 15 to Vegas. Mm-hmm. But if you were going to Pahrump, you would stop at Baker, California, which is the world's largest thermometer. <laughs> Right. Then you would turn left into the desert, okay. and then an hour later you'd end up at Shoshone, which is the doorway to Death Valley. Oh, but instead wow. of going straight to Death Valley, you would turn right, and a half an hour later you would be in Pahrump, Nevada. In Pahrump. Yes. And so you don't get those Death Valley, that heat, No, right? no. no. Death no. Valley can be 130, yeah. 120. When we're, You're more up. We're, we're really hot. We're like High 105 up. to 111. Wow. wow. But you say you can see the snow caps from yeah. on the mountains. I'd say more than half the year. It's Mount so Charleston right pic- there. Yeah, the back How of beautiful Mount, that Mount must Charleston. Be. Picturesque, I yeah. And I would think, you know, we, one of the things I wanted to mention uh, when you talked about that song, Betty, uh, uh, Peggy Sue's, is as, as a songwriter, do you think about, and I really think you ought, ought to consider thinking about where you see, what, what is the scene that you're trying to create. And you've got, it's a short novel. <laughs> you've only got so many words to paint that scene, but figure out where that scene is. And for me, I just got back to Pahrump and I'm looking up at those snow capped mountains and I'm thinking, oh, there's songs in there, baby. There's got to be songs. He's right? written a lot of songs with an open door looking out at those mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John Michael, I read that you started singing in the service, uh, you know, really uh, taking it seriously. Uh, and that reminded me of the Johnny Cash story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, that, that re- is that really when you when you started to to, to feel the need to, to write more? I wrote songs before I went to the service, but uh, it was I, I think I got my first really recognition mm-hmm. when uh, I sang a song from a uh, an incident that happened on our first uh, mission out. Mm-hmm. And I, I just, when we got back to base camp, I wrote about it. And the song is about what happened out there yeah. and the lives that were taken. Oh, boy. And it was about the helicopter, the dust off, coming in and picking up all the wounded and the dead. Mm. And when I wrote that song, um, one of the officers uh, heard the song. And he wanted me to st- come to the officers club and play it mm. so I went to the officers club and play it and then they wanted to send me to other officers clubs and, and it started, they wanted me to play the song wow. well what happened was I wanted to get back with my unit mm-hmm. because you know you're programmed you're ingrained and trained to be part of a unit and when you're taken out of that it's very uh, uh, you know it's, uh, yeah, but it's hard yeah. disconcerting yeah. You know, Those are your and, brothers, right? Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to go back into the action because that's what I was trained to do. Mm-hmm. But when I got out of the service, you know, I started doing following that that direction. You learned that you love to do that, didn't you? Yeah. 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 That's really something. And Pepper G, for you, uh, show business has been in your blood. Um, I, the age of five, you were doing TV sitcom, uh, not sitcoms, but uh, shows. Yeah. Was it the, McCoy, the Real McCoys? Well, you so to speak, yeah. I, I was in Brownies, you know, the younger Girl Scouts. Yes, Brownies. And sure. our Girl Scout troop was invited to the set <laughs> of the Real McCoys uh-huh. to be in a couple of scenes. Walter Brennan and all that. And then yeah. I had uh, been in some park theater plays in our neighborhood. Yeah. So, of course, I was a pro. <laughs> and um, of course. for some reason, they brought me back to do a couple extra scenes. And mm-hmm. uh, But, yeah, cool. diff- different kinds of TV yeah. shows and yeah. a lot of charity events and backyard plays and singing extravagances for our community. And you've done community. movies, you've directed, you've produced... You've done a lot, haven't you? Well, John Michael Ferrari is the director. He's the uh, director. Yes, I've produced. You're the producer. Uh, for, yes, different, a uh, lot of shorts, a couple full-length movies and stuff. He's an exceptional director. He's oh, got wow. such an eye because he has an eye uh-huh. with music in timing and photography in vision. Wow. And so it goes easy and smoothly and everybody likes him. I always seem to find it seems the people that have talent, it's not always in one direction. It's uh, the talent spreads to other things. So uh, when did you get into photography? When did, I mean, 
that had to be a love too and well, a passion. When you do music, you have a sense of timing. Yeah. So when you're shooting movies and scenes, it's all about the timing. You know when to cut. Like it's just yeah. instinctively like that scene's too long. It's too, it, it, it's too short. You, you just know when to cut and cut to this. When we're editing, when we're shooting something, I'm editing the whole movie in my head. Are you really? Well, yeah. yeah. And best uh, directors have a sense of uh, music timing. Yeah. and Because you have to have that. Um, but what was the other question? He, your photography. Oh, my photography. photography. He came home one day. He yes. used to tour uh-huh. every year. And I loved it. Because yeah. every time he went on tour, I would go the first couple of days and then come home and empty a closet I'd take everything out of the closet spread it all over the floor he would have hated it it would have been there for like several days I scrub the closet and decide what I want to put back and organize it he, but after seven years of touring you know, or something he says uh, you know I'm really done of touring I just want to let's just play music here at home let's not tour and I said but wait a minute I still have two more closets to do <laughs> but um, you got to go for two more years I'm sorry <laughs> yeah, he started picking up photography he had always a natural eye for it mm-hmm. and then when he started studying it um, he started shooting and the reputation spread so fast and he was so likable in the studio that he took extraordinary pictures of many, many actresses, models. Yeah. I mean, you name it. Well, uh, all our friends were either actors or models. Right. So the, for the first year, I, I got in touch with all my uh, actor friends. I said, I'm going into photography. I'll shoot anything you want for free. I did it for a whole year. Wow. Shooting for free for all the different people. One time he shot and he had to say, Excuse me, I forgot to put film in the camera. (laughs) (laughs) That was Christine Hart. That was one of our friends. I was lucky. But that was back when you had film. Yeah. Yeah. And I was shooting, Mm -hmm. and and, um, one of my models, uh, she was terrific. Uh, She came in, and uh, we used to, at that time, we had to wait for the contact sheet. You take it down, and they make a contact sheet for you. And we were sitting at the kitchen table, and I opened it up, and I looked at it, and they were horrible. Oh. And I'm thinking, oh, she's going to just get so mad when she sees how terrible these pictures are. Oh. So I, I slid the uh, contact sheet over to her, and she was sitting across the table. And she pulled it to her, and she looked at the contact sheet, and she looked up and pushed it back. She said, Johnny... They'll get better. You'll get better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's what I was expecting you to say. I love these. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> he did get better. Yeah. He has um, did a lot of covers for different people's music. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Well, a lot of uh, he did a lot of good photography for several years mm-hmm. until I said, John, please go back to your original music because mm-hmm. I had loved. His, his, his writing. I've always been enamored of it. Uh, the first song that I produced for him was in 1990, When Love Said Goodbye. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of like a Motown, bluesy, yeah. I don't know what it is. But, I dig oh, that gosh. Stuff. Yeah. I love it. And you it. produced. So you're a music producer as well? Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's what I've done for 34 years now. Mm-hmm. Exclusive, well, not exclusively really, John. I've had some other. Uh, and clients. you've mentored some pretty impressive talent over the years. I've seen by both of you. Uh, um, American Idol uh, people. Oh, um, some of our students. We don't we don't like have a school or no. take a lot of students. But once in a while, if someone wants training and we think that they have a chance to go all the way, mm-hmm. you know, my, my you know, uh, there are so many uh, singing teachers and performance coaches. Yeah. Let them go somewhere else. But if we think that someone can go all the way, one of those was Alison Murajeta. Mm-hmm. I R A H E T A. We uh, brought her in a week after she turned twelve, and studied with her until she was seventeen. She won uh, Telemundo's Quinceanera, fifty thousand wow. uh, dollar, con- and a contract with Sony, and uh, a car or something. And then Jeez. she went on years later, uh, seventeen years old, to American Idol, and she well, she came top four. Adam Lambert should have been one, and Allison should, should have been two. I'm just yeah. saying. I'm just, <laughs> so it was that I'm year. just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, season uh. eight. But uh, she did her red hair, and she followed our advice, and that changed her whole career. And, oh, and of course, we've had top 20 American Idol. We had 
top 10 Taiwan idol. This, nice. Yeah. At that time, there were idols everywhere. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think it all worked out pretty well for Adam Lambert, you know. I oh, think any What a talent. It works out better if you don't win. <laughs> Sometimes it does, yeah. I think so. Well, well you, you know, the thing about American Idol is you're thrust into this life and without paying your dues. Yeah. That's where you learn. You learn with the it. The craft. Now, uh, right. Allison, she paid her dues because she... From the time she was 12 to uh, getting to American Idol, she actually went out and performed with us night after night in venues, even when there was like uh, bars. Mm-hmm. Ferrari she, and Friends with the Ferrari band. and Friends. I love yes. that. Uh-huh. Yeah. For years. And, uh, love she, alliteration. She did it. She learned. She was paying her dues. Yes. Uh, she would come out and she would play. And then during the show, uh, Pepper would come up and says, she's got to go home and do homework. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they played right. a lot of John specialty or country clubs uh-huh. and the sort of high-end venues. Oh, yeah, nice. that, that's yeah. Been across the country and right. even here. And I put a kid on stage, Allison, and the manager rushed over me and says, you can't have a child on stage. And I said, well, let's do this. Let her sing one song. If you don't want her on the stage, she'll, we'll take her off. It's not a problem. Halfway through the song, the entire kitchen staff had come out of the kitchen and was lining the walls. The event in the next ballroom over heard it, came in, was lining the walls. He came up to me and said, she can stay. <laughs> I said, okay. So we, you know, we worked with a lot of very talented people. Oh, Mary Elizabeth like McGlynn, Rosemary Richards, I mean, mm-hmm. Thurston Watts. We've been, and he's worked with people like Al Boyd that... You know, are tra- traveling in Asia and in Europe right now with like the OJs and drifters. And- when we work with people, I have a, a knack for listening to a singer and know almost immediately what they're doing with their voice wow. and how to correct it. That's a talent there too. And uh, mm-hmm. so it doesn't take long. Uh, sometimes the, it, it does take a while if the artist is resistant to change because sometimes they learned a certain way of singing mm-hmm. because they listen to somebody on the radio doesn't mean they're always singing correctly and they grab a hold of that and they have to break that habit but once they do and they learn how to sing correctly you just uh, you discover your own style of what your, what your voice can really do it's so important yeah. what an amazing thing to see a student or client uh, after John gets to him or her uh, they understand how much better it is what they're doing and what they want to do singing and they have such joy and happiness it feels like John's given them the greatest gift oh I'm singing now and I can sing four nights a week without hurting my voice and it's such a gift that he gives to uh, certain people Uh, Sophie Love been working with him for two years now Sophie Love she's got the best uh, harmonies around and everybody in Vegas I was really hoping she can join us today and add some uh, but I know she's writing today but she had co-writing commitment with uh, Sherry Mm -hmm. Carmody Mm -hmm. which you who you've written with several times and uh, And we teach her that once you're making a commitment then you keep it. But she really appreciated your invitation. Ah, next time. Yeah, absolutely. Next God time willing. You're in town. Yeah. Now you've got a new CD out and you've got a new single, right? So talk about that. After the Be the Smile on Your Face, we released a single in twenty twenty two called My Heart Can't Breathe. Uh-huh. That uh, has uh, wonderful tracks on it. Also recorded at Larry Beard, like a rock and roll band mm-hmm. is on that uh, album and uh it won. We John was employed to come to Los so Beverly Hills to sing in the main showroom for an Oscar party. Awesome. And now they have the so the main Ooh. Oscar party. He was invited. A couple of interesting stories. He shows up with his guitar, and the sound man says, "Where's your band?" <laughs> and this is at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's huge, 3,000 or whatever, yeah. seats and stuff. And he says, "No, I was just uh, employed to come here and sing this particular song, one song." This is okay. So he gave him the best sound probably we've ever had. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. And second of all, he finishes playing his song, and he turns and he looks, and he sees this lady carrying this huge trophy with a big world on top of it. Muni <laughs> Ivroni uh, uh, from Art for Peace. And the reason they wanted him to sing that song is they wanted to award him 
Peace Song of the Year. And he sees wow. this lady coming. What did you think? Did I don't you know if she was going to hit me with it or what. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I had no idea. I yeah. mean, I had no wow. idea. I'm up there on stage uh, and, and uh, at the Oscar party. Mm-hmm. And they're bringing me this big thing. And wow. That's and just... a whole ballroom for the, full of celebrities. Wow. And uh, so you could talk with John Michael Ferrari for two hours mm-hmm. and never know he won any kind of award. Yeah. I, I mean... I, Very know, humble guy. If you were to list them, we would be here too long. I, yeah. And it's you just, crazy. You just won one last week here in Nashville, right? Yeah. yeah. We, we, if we twist your arm, will you tell us about that one? She can tell you more about it than I can. <laughs> See, he won't. <laughs> That's the way he is. <laughs> she just says, oh, get dressed. We're going. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you were winning this one? Uh, not for a while. And she says, oh, oh, by the way, we're in Nashville. You, you're going to get some kind of award. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. Some kind of award. Uh, some kind of award. It was the Nashville Music Awards. All right. And it was last week. And they named him Outstanding Radio Artist of the Year. That's great. He is uh, one of the many independent artists that really have a lot of charting songs internationally. Mm-hmm. You know, he's mm-hmm. charting in Belgium and the Netherlands and Spain and the Great UK, Britain. Right? Yes, in yes. Australia. Canada, mm-hmm. you know, South Africa. A world artist here. Yes, yes, yeah. a lot of Australia. And mm-hmm. it's been just remarkable mm-hmm. uh, to see. <laughs> he says, Who am I next to? <laughs> so if he's on a chart next to Taylor Swift, what do you say? <laughs> oh, I'm dating. <laughs> he says, Guess who I'm dating now? I'm dating Taylor. <laughs> oh boy, Travis Kelsey might be a little upset. <laughs> <laughs> and once one of his songs was number two to Adele for six weeks on wow. some, I forget which chart of it. Yeah, you and yeah. Adele. Huh? Yeah. You uh, would never know he was uh, Singer Songwriter of the Year 2019 with the Producer's Choice Honors. Okay. He got uh, the Fame Awards. His album, Be the Smile on Your Face, won Triple A Album of the Year. Mm. Triple A is like Americana or something. I don't know much about those things either. And just many. He was uh, the New Music Weekly named him Crossover Artist of the Year and their wow. awards ceremony. I mean, I could go on. But he will not. <laughs> yeah, he will not. That's what I like about you, John. I don't even let her put up the... <laughs> he doesn't let me put all the stuff up in the house. He gives me one place, the mantle over the fireplace. So every time he gets a new trophy, I take down an old one and put it on. And I put it all on. We have a 3,000 square foot Quonset hut on our ranch. Nice. We use mostly for the children that come from <laughs> youth ministries oh, or, so nice. or reform school kids or whatever. They're mm-hmm. coming and they're feeling a sense of safety and, and pleasure of not being uh, intimidated or bullied and allowed them just to grow with music or acting yeah. or whatever it is. And, That's and so nice. So That's just awesome. Yeah, he lets yeah. me decorate all the walls with fans send him things we love you John Michael Ferrari and all oh, that's stuff. Cool. And, oh it's so <laughs> sweet you know but not in the house not in the house <laughs> we're gonna take a little break when we come back you're gonna pick up that guitar and play for us okay alright that's part of the show okay. <laughs> don't go away you're listening to the Songwriter Connection connecting with music makers and hearing their songs and stories now back to the show with your host Dave Linehan and again, if you're listening on YouTube, uh, please hit the like and subscribe button. I know we got a radio type show on a video platform, <laughs> maybe someday. I think it's important to be there because, as we've said before in the past, it's the second largest search engine in the world. You could find anything to do <laughs> on YouTube. Anything I, I, I'm not a real handy guy, but if I need to fix something, I ask YouTube and it shows me. I had a I had a guest recently on the podcast that tells me they learned how to play from lessons. They learned how to play guitar lessons on YouTube. So, hey, it's there. So, we're out there. Songwriter Connection Podcast. John Michael Ferrara is our guest. Pepper Jay is with him. And you've got that guitar picked up. We've got to hear some of these songs that you're talking about. All right. Here we go. <laughs> what is that a key that to my uncle Fran? <laughs> you want something else? No, no, no. No, it's perfect. something you wrote. That was perfect. No, it's perfect. I did. I wrote it from the record. 
<laughs> Comic relief. Oh, uh, okay. I tell you what, instead of playing a whole song, we'll play just a couple of few little knickknacks of songs. Okay, good. One, one night I was uh, working and I had uh, YouTube on. And, and uh, it, was, it had the sound down. And there was uh, uh, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. Oh, man. They were dancing across the screen. Uh-huh. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching it. I'm thinking, yeah, okay, I could write a, a song for old Fred. Yeah. You know, and uh, so as I'm watching that, I'm, I'm playing around with the guitar and, and I just kind of came up with this thing. I thought, old Fred could dance to this. Dance to this. Oh, yeah, I feel it. Don't need a reason to love you. Don't need a reason why. I do, cause I do, when it comes to loving you. I don't need a reason why, oh, oh. don't need a reason to kiss you, Mm-mm. don't need a reason why. You're my shining star, you are cause you are, and I don't need a reason why. That's <laughs> so classy. <laughs> Very good. And that's on the CD right there. On uh, the Be the Smile on Your Face. Be the Smile yeah. on Your Face. So, you know, that's... Uh, so I, I write... I don't really write country songs, mm-hmm. but a lot of the songs... Well, if you listen to this podcast, you know we don't care for genres anyway. Yeah. You make your own genre, right? So. But when we record, they put a slide guitar in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I guess that would make it good. And then, you know, I get, we get radio play. You know, we get crossover radio play. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you know? that's me. So one day I'm at uh, uh, one day I'm at Trader Joe's and I'm standing there at the produce section and squeezing. Uh, uh, what was I squeezing? Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Ah. And the guy next to me was squeezing avocados, <laughs> and the girl next to me it was right across from her, us. She was squeezing tomatoes, and we, me and this guy looked up at one time, the same time, this beautiful girl on the other side. She just gave us the most beautiful smile, put the tomatoes in her cart, and then just moved on down the aisle. And the guy next to me said, boy, would I love to be the smile on her face. And I said, yeah, she's one heck of a girl. And I went home and I wrote these two songs. I'll play just a little bit of it. Sure, sure. I've been waiting for this moment with you, lying right here. My heart holding you The breath from your side Touching my face Words you speak I can almost taste And ooh, ooh, I never thought this could happen to me I wanna, I wanna, I wanna love you like this Love you like that Build you up Bring you back I want a world in your twirl Kiss you girl Be my girl To a better place And who we I want to be The smile on your face uh, The title cut See where the title went? Yeah the End of the chorus Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you didn't give that hook away yeah. till the very end. I yeah, love that. that. That's it. And then I wrote that song from that one incident. And then I thought, how about what I said? She's one heck of a girl. Yeah. I want to take you to a movie. I want to hold your hand. I want to show you my room view. Cafe terrace, table for two, because you're one. Heck of a girl, heck of a girl Ooh, baby, you're one Heck of a girl, heck of a girl Baby, you're the one <laughs> So you got the title in the whole chorus right there. Oh, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've known you very long, but I get the feeling that you can make a song out of just about anything. Well, um, I can sometimes. Yeah. You know, but writing... Um, there's a way of writing, you know. If you say, "John, write me a song about a banana <laughs> dating a hot dog," you know, <laughs> you know uh, there's a way to do that. You know, you make a, a, a get a list of what 
who, what, where's, you know, bananas, what can you do, and what... Uh, anyways, you just make a list of things. Mm-hmm. And you can write a song that way, you come up with something. But that's not what you do. That's not what I do. What do you do? I, I write from silence. From silence. From silence. Explain that. I, got, I want to get into that. Okay, well, uh, when I get ready to write, I set time aside. I, I'm going to write... At, at this particular time. You make an appointment with yourself. Right. We've talked about it in the past. So when like, we get back to the ranch, uh, uh, we have some things we're going to do, and I'm going to set it aside some time. Mm-hmm. Now, the first thing I do is I, I cut off all social media. I don't watch news. I don't watch TV. I don't watch anything. I start getting into my world of silence so I can hear that inner voice inside of me and what it speaks to me. Wow. Because I don't try to be clever. I don't try to come up with anything. I, get, I talk to my subconscious mind. I said, this is what we're going to work on. This is what we're going to do. What do you think? You know, give me something. Give me, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try it, come up with something, but you got to give me some other things, some things that you, you always give me that are clever. And after a while, I hear those voices. I hear those, those lines that just come out. And, and they're in the back of my head. It's like when you lose your keys, you ask yourself, what do I do with those keys? And a moment later, your subconscious mind tells you what you did with those keys. It's the same thing with lyrics for me. So I, I'll write a song, and it'll come mostly from inspiration from that, that magical place. Mm. But if you're not in silence, you're not going to hear that voice. Wow. You know, if you're hearing all the cars and noise and TV and radio and all these things that are interfering with you, you're not going to get to that special place. And we live on a beautiful ranch. and um, It's quiet. It's mm-hmm. quiet. Except for the peacocks when they're mating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I'll walk at night on the ranch and, and I'll stay in silence and then I'll pick up a guitar and, and things will start coming to me. Mm. Yeah, on the other out. hand, he is extremely empathetic. So, for example, uh, a young 24-year-old confessed to him one time that she was a cutter. We had never heard of cutters. Kids cut herself. actually, yeah, cut herself. Yeah. And when asked why you cut yourself, she said, it, "I focus on that pain instead of the pain of my life." Basically, you know. You imagine. And uh, from that, mm. John wrote, don't fall between the daylight. Mm-hmm. Or uh, somebody else might, you know, uh, be wanting to do something. And, and, and uh, for example, he might have seen a picture of a girl standing in front of a jukebox. And, and it kind of looked like the girl was crying. Mm-hmm. And he'll make a whole story up about why she's crying, why the boyfriend maybe comes and tries to talk to her. Something inspires him, yeah. and then he goes into his space, and I know to leave him alone. I don't always do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I try to leave him alone, and so inspiration comes from all sorts of different places, either experiences of his own, or he's very caring and people open up to him and he writes stories about their experiences that's called I Don't Want to Love and that's on that CD right there can you play a little bit of it for us? yeah I see you standing at the jukebox Playing our favorite song Swaying slowly to the music As you sing along Brushing back the hair from your face I can see your tears all mine When I said I didn't love you anymore Baby, I lied I don't want to love, I don't want to love, I don't want to love Nobody but you You're the only one that makes me feel the way 
I do So classy, such a nice song. <laughs> and I'm so glad you brought that up. You know, you, I think, because we're going to talk about your TV and radio uh, coming up in just a little bit. But one of the interview questions you had asked me was tips about co writing, because we do a lot of co writing in Nashville. I never thought of, of it, and, and I'm so glad you said this turn off your phones, Get don't watch TV, don't watch the social media, get in, find that quiet place. There's voices in there that can help you. And we've never really talked about it on this show before, but I think that's one of the most valuable tips that you just gave to all of these aspiring songwriters that do listen to this podcast. Yeah, go ahead. I I was just thinking of something. Uh, John wrote a song about six years ago called Working My Way to Nashville. Yeah, well, and our good friend Ray Ligon, right? Yes, well, no, just John. John? And then he didn't feel that it was finished, so he put it in one of the many large folders of unfinished songs, brainstorming ideas, notes. I gather everything and I save it. He goes, you still have that? I go, yeah. So uh, about two years ago, I was looking for something else in those folders, Uh and I saw Working My Way to Nashville, and I was the worst time at all to bring it to John as a project Uh because he was working on the radio show, Uh he was remixing, he was about ready to perform, he was about ready to record, and he said, you know, I really don't have the time on this, do what you can do on it. So I worked on it for several months, and you know, an outsider would look and see a correctly formatted song and think they was finished. And I said, John, I worked on it. I think I made it better, but I don't feel it's finished. So we put it back into the uh-huh. folder. And then about a year and a half after that, you know, everybody in Nashville, John, John Pepper, would you co-write with us? Let's write, co-write. Love to co-write with y'all. <laughs> and, and we always say, oh, yeah, that'd be great, great. We, you know, we've been doing, working together for so long. You know, yeah. We don't know what other things might look like. But when Ray Ligon, L-I-G-O-N, mm-hmm. uh, who we had already liked as a friend by that time, great said, Good I'd love to co-write with y'all, yeah. I went back to the hotel room at the time. Or no, maybe we were staying with Rich Banks. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Johnny... I think that song, Working Why With Nashville, would be perfect for him. Mm. And I feel that there's still two lyrics that are weak, and see what we can do. So I sent him the, the song with the melody line that we had and the lyric sheet, and it said, Working My Way to Nashville by John Michael Ferrari, Pepper J, and question mark, question mark, Ray Ligon, question, question mark. <laughs> and he came back and said, heck yes. He That's made right. the song stronger. <coughs> uh, we took him in to Larry Beard and I recorded it. John explained how he wanted it played. Uh, we talked about how we wanted it sung. Thought, we, he made our vision come true. But what you don't know, Dave Lenhan, is that the Kentucky Songwriters Association just named that song, Working My Way to Nashville, Songwriter of the Year. Wow. We just got Songwriter of the Year for Working My Way to Nashville. And if you go to either John Michael Ferrari on YouTube or you go to Ray Ligon on YouTube, you'll hear the song Mm -hmm. everywhere. It's Mm -hmm. it's located everywhere. But particularly on John's YouTube because I put together a music video for Ray with him singing it and a bunch of photos that David G. Baker from Nashville took of him. I thought it was a beautiful, if I don't say so myself, music video. So that was cool. And again, he would never mention it, but I might say, and I'll say, hey, Ray Legan, we miss you. <laughs> I love it. I was supposed to play with him at the listening room uh, in Pigeon Forge last week, and unfortunately he couldn't make it. So uh, you owe me one, Ray. Me, <laughs> we need to schedule another show real soon. He's a great guy. Yes, We've and we enjoyed and very written. much 
uh, working yeah. with him. So, yeah. we, and then we have he has a co-write with uh, Taryn Amay. Taryn Amay, I just discovered her, and she is really amazing. Ama- like a yeah. voice of an angel, like an angel, and she yeah. writes such loving up songs. And she'll throw something jazz chords in you. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. she's very talented. John put together uh, some brainstorming notes about homework again, mm-hmm. and then I took it over and just. Wrote a whole bunch of stuff. Kind of a children's song, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I said, you know, I think Taryn is the person. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow at Bobby's Idol Hour, she's going to uh, sing it out in public for the first time. I'm going to be there. What time you guys start? We're going to be there 3 to, to three 5 to tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And we got to be over at the 12 Keys. So I, yeah, know, for but a that's while. about, yeah. So we'll yeah. go from one place to another. <laughs> You're used to doing that, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Th- that's, the, that's the thing. But I just wanted to mention yeah. Taryn and her songwriting proudness. Good. And a, She's amazing. A, the yeah. friendships that we've made in this town yeah. Isn't have, it something? have been extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. I agree. You know, we've been here for 10 years and some of the best friends I've ever made uh, right here in this wonderful town. John, Mike, I wanted to ask you, you do radio. Uh, tell us about your radio show and, and how we can listen in. And I have a radio show, FM, uh, and uh, what's the call letters? It's 97.7 FM, uh-huh. and w- after they air it on the Nevada radio station, they mm-hmm. allow me to put it on his YouTube channel. Oh, so go so to the YouTube. I take a slate like a, of the picture of the people that are on the show and mm-hmm. and just make it as a awesome on his youtube so songwriters perspective awesome Very and good. Uh, i tell stories uh-huh. um about my life uh, uh, short stories that introduces the song uh-huh. and uh and also i uh, play songs of uh of our friends so i figure i have a radio show they told me i could play anybody i want that's great. So we we get a hold of uh, people that we've met in Nashville. So if you have professional recordings, send it to us, and uh, we'll play it for you. Now the and radio station will not play something that's not sounding professional. It's have that. But yeah. we've included Justin Love's music, Tara love Love. He's such uh, a great music. talent. Uh, yeah, great you know, guy. we try to a lot Taren, of our Taren, we Taren, Taren, yes, Taren, a are you lot of for me? and then not Ridge, like, Ridge <laughs> Banks, yes, we have his music. I yeah. love his music. I do too. And uh, and he we also have a lot of Muse Boat, M U S E B O A T friends, uh, international indie artists all over the world. Wonderful. If you go to museboat dot com, mm-hmm. you want to hear some indie uh, songs that are of all different genres and uh, see I love doing that he's yeah. often artist of the week or that he's like the OG is the one right. that they go to for, <laughs> you know, and they love his music on that and we try so to we can find this the show on your YouTube right YouTube yes uh, John works. Michael Ferrari like the, like the yeah. car right? I, I think yes. the, the stories are interesting I do too and, uh, all about the stories you know it's how uh, I my agent uh, kicked me out of Vegas. <laughs> Steve Sheldon, may he rest in peace. Yeah, he was a really good agent. Uh, uh, he used to book all the acts in the Casquill Mountains. Wow. And he moved to Vegas, and uh, he took me on. This At the end of his life, uh, he was getting older. But he used to book all the major acts in the Casquill Mountains. But he gave wow. me some advice. Uh, he said that uh, when Woody Allen was starting out, he he told Woody Allen, he says, do the comedy that you do and your audience will find you. And he said, do the music that you do and your audience will find you. You know, just go out there and do it. And really, that we've lived by that. I agree yeah. with that 100%. That's what I preach on this show every week. Yeah. Every week. Find your own thing. You know, define it. Yeah, because we've been told, you know, especially we go in the studio and they go, there's a lot of major, major sevens chords you play. (laughs) John loves major sevens. I love major sevens too. I do. And uh, I said, yeah, I like those major sevens. Well, we don't do that in Nashville. (laughs) (laughs) We gotta start. (laughs) Well, sometimes we listen to our session later. Uh-huh. And then sometimes we say thank you, but we're going to do it this way. Yeah, you know, yeah, there you go. we just talk it After over. After all, they work for you. <laughs> oh, we've been exceptionally happy with yeah. beer. But when we music. came to Nashville, I've heard nothing but good things. About yes, here. excellent. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we decided that we we're going to take the advice uh, and and listen because we were newbies. Uh-huh. We didn't know Nashville. We didn't know how it works, and and 
we wanted to get on the charts, and we had um, Larry Beard, which was excellent. As our session leader As and our session leader. acoustic guitarist. And he gave us good advice, and it was because of his advice, he said, drop that third verse. Oh, we hated that. <laughs> it was like losing a child. Oh, I bet. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. But we did it. But you did it. And, and because of that, it went up to number two. Yeah. Wow. How about that? So beautiful. Yeah, nice. What a lovely song. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I want to hear at least one more song before we go. You've been in town and you've been doing, you know, we were talking today over at Ridges. We had a nice little lunch and you've been in town um, filming for a, a, a television show that you're putting together. And I want to hear more about that because what you said today at lunch was talking about how you give back. You know, yes. what can you ask yourself? What can you give? Not what I need from you. You know, what can you do for me? Which I know a lot of people think that way, but... What can you give? And you seem like the kind of folks that just give and give. And, and um, So tell us about the, the TV show. And thank you so much for giving exposure to a lot of us songwriters here in town. It's just so beautiful that you do that, that you give us this platform. So tell us about the show. Tell me more about it. You know, uh, the radio show has been so successful, mm -hmm. uh, unbelievably successful. That same station and another station mm -hmm. have Ferrari Fridays. I so starting at 4 o'clock, they play nothing but John's Michael Ferrari songs. That's so cool. For an hour and a half or two to two and a half hours well, with, with uh, commercial breaks and stuff okay. like that. Okay. And uh, we've been so welcomed and had such kindness show, shown us from the singer-songwriter community in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And people give us opportunities, you know, and make yeah. connections and introductions. And John, it was John Michael Ferrari's idea. He says, let's turn it into, well, first of all, he says, I have an idea. Those are the four scariest words really I ever are. hear. I can see years <laughs> passing before my eyes when he says, I have an idea. But yeah. then I, you know, I said, okay, well, let's go for it. Mm -hmm. And it was just a way of giving back. So I went to the Nevada uh, Channel 45, mm -hmm. oh, and 25. I said, here's what we're thinking of doing. And they said, Pepper J, if you shoot it, we'll air it. Wow. I said, okay. And then I told John, you know, when it's all done, and thank you, David, for being part oh, of it. I appreciate that a lot. When it's Honored. all done, we'll pitch it to a Nashville TV station where I have absolutely no contacts whatsoever, <laughs> but I will have good content. And uh, so we'll see what happens. You never know. But regardless, it'll go on his YouTube channel because that's where I put everything. But it's a way to bring people together. That's yes. We were talking about, you know, you're independent demon. artist doesn't mean you're all by yourself. No. But it means you still have to have a collective uh, people around you. You do. To help you. Yeah. Because every opportunity we've ever received has been so, somebody we knew or introduced us to somebody. Referred us or introduced mm. us or mm -hmm. something. And I want to say that his Songwriters Perspective radio show is about him explaining hints to people listening, if they want to be a songwriter, if they want to be a, a, an entertainer, you know, if they want to be a singer, and he talks a little bit about radio structure, he talks a little bit about genre uh, intros. Each episode, he's giving hints. Plus, we interview another songwriter every episode, so they get another spot. Sounds a lot like this other podcast I know uh, and then we bit. include another friends if they have quality songs on the show so mm -hmm. it, it's a win-win for people in a lot of different directions I, you know, I so think great. the stories are, are interesting uh, there's one short story about uh, I was playing this club in Walnut Creek California and they hosted a lot of the comedians and uh, upcoming uh, act, uh, comedians and, and singers mm -hmm. And um, I, my turn was coming up, you mm -hmm. know, to do my, my spot, my show. And um, so I went over to the bar and I did what we always do, you know, or to drink, you know, just have a you know, scotch and water, please. You know. And so as I'm walking over to the stage, I have my drink in my hand and I, I see the owner <laughs> and, and he's going to wish me good luck, you know. <laughs> and he laid into me. And what? just started yelling at me. He said, if you can't get on my stage without having a drink in your hand and get the blankety blank out of here and don't ever come back. Wow. 
and and I put the drink down. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I scared him. <laughs> and and and, and uh, he was very young at the time. Yeah, I was very young, and and I got on stage, and and um, wow, you know, I did my show, and later on I went backstage, and and he was at, at his desk, and I stood there, and he didn't say anything, you know, there to pick up my money, mm-hmm. and I said, why did you yell at me and not? Everybody does it. All the other acts, they get pick up their drinks. Right. He says, because you have potential. Ah. And don't let alcohol interfere. Wow. <laughs> Good point. And I never had another drink well, before, before you else. played. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good. You know, and, and share little stories. Mm-hmm. And that was for me. It doesn't mean anybody else should do yeah. it. But, you know, right. drinking and, and drugs will get you in more trouble mm-hmm. than anything else. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Got to watch. Especially what we do. You know, when you play a lot of clubs and a lot of bars, you know, there's always alcohol there. And you have the like, okay, just a little bit, take the edge off, just a little, you know, because you're a little nervous, you know. And then you yeah. start leaning on that. Man, I'm telling you, you get the taste. You need, <laughs> you need to work through that. You got to be careful. That's right. You, you got to work through those uh, that nerves, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that frightening feeling I, that you have. John doesn't get nervous. Yeah, well, he'd rather be on stage. Mm hmm. Than any other place, it's his favorite place. Matter of fact, that's your place. His, that's your his home. saying yeah. that since oh more than three years, thirty years mm-hmm. is there's never a stranger in the audience. Never. Because tell him about the time when people said it was in South Carolina or wherever yeah, we were I was performing in South Carolina, and I come out and they introduce me, come on stage, they go, "Hey, how you doing? Oh my gosh, yeah, how are you?" I love it. Yeah. And so afterwards, yeah. the guy says, "How do you know all these people?" I said, "I don't." <laughs> But if I treat them like strangers, they'll never be my friends. Oh, man. So I treat them as I, all those people are my friends. Like, I already Best know them. Best friends. That's awesome. And they respond to me in the same way. I think you've never met a stranger, have you? No. No. You know, there's a friend of mine who I, I really adore. Her name is Kim, Dr. Dr. Reverend Kim McLean. Big hit writer. And she wrote the last few songs with Loretta Lynn. And she's got a great book out there with Loretta Lynn called A, a Song and a Prayer that they wrote together before Lynn, Lynn, uh, Loretta's passing. And Kim uh, says this all the time. She says, love them with a song. And I think that's kind of what you do, isn't it? You just you get out there and there's no strangers and you just pour out that love in a song. Uh, and I think that's wonderful. So before we go, we got to hear one more from you, John Michael. Um, John Michael Ferrari, our guest, Pepper J2, joining us. Thank you so much. There's a song that's actually coming out. January 20th. 15th, 2024, his new album, My I Keep Dreaming, and this song is going to be one of the tracks. Awesome. It's about a gambler, a traveling gambler. Mm. And I kind of put myself in this situation because sometimes I feel like that's me going through life. And like all of us, you know, we just kind of do the best we can. I'm a traveling gambler Riding a winning streak Holding four aces That's all I need So lady, won't you join me For a celebration toast I'm an old man wishing Young man's ghost There's always a storm of brewing Somewhere down the road But I keep rolling on Rolling on It's a rough life I've been living But I'll keep rolling on It's going to be on the new CD out yeah. in uh, January. Look forward to it. It's uh, John Michael Ferrara, our guest. Thank you so much. Good to get to know you a little bit. And Pepper J, you too. Thank you for uh, stopping by, coming to my home studio, and playing around the Duncan Fife dining room table. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, you for listening to the Songwriter Connection podcast. Find us on social media at Songwriter Connection. Also, listen to Dave Lanahan's Nashville Connections radio show. It streams live every Friday morning on WOBL and WNOI. Look for us on Facebook and YouTube. See you next time on Songwriter Connection.